Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from GoMakeThings.com. And today we're working on the final part in a three-part series on how to build a dynamic web app using PHP and a sprinkling of HTML web components to make it Ajaxy and dynamic. Um, and the end result is uh, an approach that is really simple, easy to reason about, um, and incredibly resilient. Uh, so just a quick recap if you missed the first two videos. If not, you can you can jump ahead. But um, uh, in the first video, which I will link to um, above and then down in the description as well, uh, we built out the PHP portion of things. Uh, so we have a form here that lets you add new items to a list. Uh, if we look in the back end, we have a form that points to a PHP API with the post method. Um, and uh, when it submits to this endpoint, the endpoint adds some items to a JSON file, and then back over in our PHP file, we read that file, and if it has no items, like it currently does not, we show a message, but if it does, we display um, those items in a list. We loop through each one and render it into the UI. Uh, and when we submit to this endpoint, it is, um, it is updating that file, and then it's redirecting us back to this page. Uh, it also appends a query parameter uh, message that has the, the status of how our submit went, and that gets displayed in the UI as well. So let me just kind of show you how that works, right? Um, so we are going to, let's say, buy birthday cake. And if I hit add item, the page reloads. We've got our message up top that gets displayed in the UI and an item on the list. Um, we also need to buy candles and um, let's say invite friends to our party. So this is cool, but it's doing a full page reload every time, uh, which doesn't seem like a big deal right now because we have a, um, a very lightweight page with almost nothing being loaded on it. No CSS, um, no JavaScript at all. But uh, you may want a more modern experience where the page doesn't reload. Um, you could imagine too, if this form was a little bit further down on the page, the user's getting jumped up to the top every time, which is not great. It would be nice if we could keep them in the context of where they are. So in the second video, which I will again link to up top, we added an HTML web component called Ajax form. Uh, and um, what this is doing is intercepting the form submits and making that request using the fetch method. Um, so if we jump over for a second, um, we've got a bunch of options and settings that I ran through. Um, and then on submit, we are um, stopping the form from submitting. We are making a fetch request. And then when we get our information back, we are responding with it. So we're either um, sending back a redirect URL if one was provided, or we're sending back a status message if that's what the API responds with instead. And in that first video, I talk all about how I have my response set up so that if it's an Ajax request, um, it responds with a JSON object. If not, it responds with um, like a, a query response instead. Um, and uh, I've got my form activated. You can see I have Ajax form, uh, the HTML web component wrapped around my form. I have a customized submit message. So when the user submits, it will say adding your item to the list. Um, and if we jump over and reload, uh, and actually just for fun, let's put this in slow mode so that you can actually see the status message showing up. Uh, so invite friends, and then we need to clean our house so that it's not a mess for the party. Adding your item to the list, item added to the list. Now, one thing you'll notice, there's not actually an item in this list. If I reload the page, uh, I should probably take it off of <laughs> slow 3G for that part. Uh, you can see clean house now shows up in the list, but it didn't originally. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So when an event like this happens, when we submit the form Ajaxy, how do we update other parts of the HTML in response without reloading the whole page? So that's what today's video is about. Um, really quick though, um, I just wanted to mention that this video and others like it are made possible thanks to the generous support of my Go Make Things members. A recurring membership helps me create more videos like this and also gets you some cool perks. 
If that's something you want to learn more about or if you want to join, head over to gomakethings.com slash join uh, and you can get all of the details. Um, even as little as $3 a month makes a really big difference. Sorry about my dog barking in the background. He probably saw like a neighbor walking by and that really pisses him off. Um, so um, for this particular one, um, we are, this particular video, we're actually going to be using one of the web components that's in my toolkit over in the Go Make Things membership portal. So like when you join, you get access to this massive collection of um, uh, guides and tutorials and references to things that I've learned over my 10 plus years being a professional web developer. Um, I've even got some learning paths to kind of guide you through specific topics if you'd like. Um, but uh, we're going to, my favorite part, the part I use all the time, is the toolkit. Um, I've got a whole trove of web components that I use. And the one we're gonna be working with is Ajax HTML. Uh, so this lets you asynchronously update server rendered HTML in response to specific events. Um, and uh, so um, let's actually dive in and, uh, and use it. It's gonna be looking for two things, a unique ID and then the name of the event to listen for. Um, and now in our case, uh, we talked about this in the last video, but the Ajax form um, web component emits a custom event whenever it successfully gets back a response. Let's see if I can find the function for that. And that custom event is called Ajax form. So we're gonna wanna listen for that. Uh, let's jump over here and get some things set up. So we are going to load the Ajax HTML script. And then around our code that needs to get updated, let's go Ajax. It would help if I typed it correctly. Ajax HTML will indent this whole thing. Um, and we want to give it an ID. Uh, so let's call this um, the items list. And we need an event name to listen for. So event name equals Ajax form. Uh, so we've got our HTML set up. Let's go take a look at how this actually works. So I'm gonna pull this over here. And um, in here, we are defining our custom element. We've got a constructor, we're running super. We always do this in our web component constructors. Um, this tells the class for the component that's extending the HTML element class to inherit all of its properties and methods. Um, so that's a very important part of this process. Uh, and then we're getting our attributes. So the event names to listen for. Um, we could have one, you could listen for multiple events, so you could comma separate them. Uh, so this is gonna split them into an array. Um, uh, it's also going to grab a UID. Um, so if you had multiple Ajax forms running on a page, one thing you could do that we are not is you could also listen for a specific unique identifier for that event. So for example, um, in my API response, in addition to a message, I could return um, a UID like um, this is add items, right? And that could be a thing we listen for. We're not doing that here. We don't need to do that here because we only have the one event on the page. But if you have multiple Ajax forms running on a page for different things, it's a way to only update content when specific ones happen because the event name Ajax form is always going to be the same. Um, for this particular implementation. Um, if there's no names um, or if there's no ID, we're gonna bail because both of those things are required. And then we loop through each of those event names and add an event listener on the document for that event name. And whenever one of them runs, we are going to run our update HTML method, passing in the event itself and the current instance um, sorry for that giant pop up on screen there, uh, and the current instance, that way we have access to it. Over in our update HTML JavaScript file, um, if there's an event UID specified um, and the current event doesn't have that UID, we're gonna bail. We don't wanna do anything there. Um, assuming none of that is true though, this is where all the magic happens. So here's the approach, just so you understand what's happening. So when we go to update um, or when the event happens, behind the scenes, the Ajax HTML method is going to fetch the current page. It's going to get back the HTML for the page we're on as a response. 
uh, but it's gonna come as a string. So we're gonna convert that into HTML elements. We're going to find the element in that new HTML that has the ID that matches the ID of the current Ajax HTML web component. And then we're gonna replace the current one in the DOM with the new one we get back from the server because the new one from the server is gonna have the latest HTML. We're gonna swap it out. When that happens, the um, web component will, or the browser will garbage collect any event listeners we have on the current web component, set up new web, uh, new event listeners on the new one, and this process will repeat again the next time that form is submitted. Uh, so let's look at how that actually works. So we're gonna fetch the current location href. If we don't get back a response, we're just gonna bail, we'll throw an error. Um, assuming we do get back a response though, we're going to use the response text method to get back the actual HTML as a string from that response. Uh, this is um, a, an asynchronous method, uh, just like fetches, which is why we have async on update HTML, and we're using await for fetch and request text. Um, next, we don't want to render the entirety of the DOM node um, or DOM nodes that we get back as actual elements. Um, so there's this really cool method called DOM parser that lets you parse a string into HTML without actually triggering any sort of um, like render and paint processes in the browser. So we create our parser and then we run the parse from string method on it, passing in the response we got back, that string of HTML. And we're specifying that this is text slash HTML because you could also do like XML or some other stuff like that. We want HTML. Um, and then we are going to use the query selector method within that, that separate HTML document that's completely separate from our live HTML to find the element that has the same ID as the current web component that we're using, the instance. Um, if one isn't found, we're gonna bail. Otherwise, we're going to use the element replace with method to replace the current instance, the current um, HTML web component with the new one that we found in our response. And that's the whole thing. It's just 54 lines with a lot of spacing and comments. Um, it, uh, it weighs almost nothing. So um, like probably less than a kilobyte. I'd imagine that's rounding. Let's see. Um, oh no, one and a half. Okay. So uh, one and a half kilobytes, but let's actually see it in action. So I've got it, I've got it added. We've got all the things. So let's go ahead and save. Uh, not what I meant to do. Let's go ahead and clear that out and reload. Cool. So um, we're gonna clean our house. We're going to decorate, um, decorate with party supplies. And now you can see this gets added. I still have focus on my form. The page hasn't reloaded but the list automatically updated. Um, we need to, um, uh, let's see, what's some other things we might wanna do, right? Um, put out drinks and party favors, right? And so you can see it's just, it's happening really, really nicely behind the scenes. If I, um, if I add some throttling, just so that we can really see this in action, right? Um, maybe we need to um, also, um, uh, hire a DJ. I don't know, maybe it's that kind of party, right? So adding item to the list, it's gonna take a second. Item added to the list. Now this is running a little slow because we are on a 3G connection. So hire a DJ eventually shows up because um, you know, we're running on a 3G connection here. So it took a second to uh, hit the API and get a response back. But you can see how this is really nice because if I completely turn off JavaScript, right? So if I disable everything and I, um, you know, clean up after the party. So with JavaScript off, this all still works. It's doing full page reloads, um, you know, but things are still working. So it's not like, um, uh, I'm not writing the same code twice, which is an argument I often hear against progressive enhancement, but I am getting a progressively enhanced experience. Um, and it ends up being something that's really easy to maintain because most of the work happens in HTML, not in JavaScript. And I can reuse these same web components 
over and over again for all sorts of different forms, all sorts of different um, HTML that's going to get updated. It's very generic and nonspecific. It doesn't really care what the form of the HTML is as long as you know, you've got a form and some inputs or as long as you've got an ID and event name, you can have anything in here. So it works out really, really well. Um, I use this to power all of the different course platforms I've ever built. The Go Make Things membership area is built that way. My ADHD courses area is built that way. My web developer courses area is built that way. Um, and a whole slew of personal apps that I've built for myself and my family are also built that way. Um, so um, just phenomenally easy to maintain. Highly recommend it. Um, if you enjoyed this, um, I would love if you left a comment down below, let me know. Or if you had a question you wanted to ask me, something you wanted me to cover in a future video, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, obviously, like it, subscribe, share with your friends because that lets YouTube know that people enjoy this video and that they should show it to more people. So that's really helpful for me. Um, but I also wanted to mention that I recently decided to stop selling expensive courses and uh, mostly because I just, I felt like folks could only afford them on a corporate training budget and I just, it didn't feel right to me. So I decided to instead focus on creating more free content, including YouTube videos like this one um, and a recurring Go Make Things membership can really help me create more videos like this. It also gets you access to lots of cool perks like this entire membership area with all of these different tutorials and resources. Um, you can you know, bookmark your favorites and then very quickly access them later if you ever wanna get back to them. Um, and it also gets you access to my private Discord community where you can um, you know, connect with other folks who share a similar approach to building the web. Um, so if that sounds interesting, head on over to gomakethings.com slash join. Um, all membership levels get the same exact perks and even just $3 a month helps keep this channel going. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.